know what it is type of more d right here coming right at you without question get right live your truth is just one of them things right you got to speak your mind when you just got to speak your mind about something live your truth this is the platform to do it type more d i don't play no games so don't play no games with me you understand I guess down tonight we're gonna go to part two about child addicts. We're gonna look at some of the signs of teen drug abuse. Parents get on this. There's a lot of heartbroken parents out there, teens overdosing and committing suicide using drugs. It's just a very seductive way to deal with the everyday problems we faced when we were young. We're gonna tap into that. I got some screen sharing to do. We're gonna bring some people in. Um, some folks is already hitting me up. I'm going to see what they have to say. Uh, maybe Shay might jump on the show. Uh, who knows? What about the wrong segment? But for sure, I'm going to continue to give you guys the raw and the real. That's Taibu Muad Rock with me. Let's go. You already know what it is. This is Live Your Truth. All right. Child Addicts Part 2. Make sure everybody know what it is. Let's go. Everybody on Instagram, welcome. It's going down. Line it up. If you haven't heard the intro song to Live Your Truth, might be a while for you here again because my girlfriend she's a little bit psychic. what's going on t johnson live your truth follow us on youtube at taibu muadi um it goes down let's make it happen for the live share the whole nine it's going down, man. We're going to break it on down for you. Let's get a little bit of funk in here for you one time. When you hear this sound, write it down. Let's go. I'm going to go ahead and pin that. So, when I jump over here and get y'all the screen, show y'all know what it is. We going on late night. One day, y'all going to want to um, check out... Uh, the show, hoping to see twerking. <laughs> it's not gonna happen ever. But uh, aside from young ladies uh, denigrating themselves for views and the like, um, we'll build you up here, um, get y'all going the right way. Really happy to see y'all uh, get myself sitting with some good posture um i'm really happy to see y'all on a wednesday night so what's happening with parents when their children are going through uh situations where they um end up on drugs using drugs wanting to use drugs like who's leading them to that right Who's who's putting the drugs in your child children's hands? All right. That's what I want to know. So what I did was I did some screen sharing, wanted to make sure I can get y'all the facts that matter. And it's been tough to run the podcast uh with this new, you know, with this new uh This new uh, promotion I got, but 
it's all right it's all right ain't gonna waste no time get right into the topic of discussion for this evening all right um, see the problem with the african community now is we're not preparing our youth to lead in the future one or two of us you're looking at one of them step out on their own become conscious and just decide to lead but we as adults as as african adults we're not preparing our african youth to be leaders not just in our communities but in a larger community and one of the things that we make that we don't have it instilled in our young people if not to do not to fall um victim and pray to the pitfalls that we all face throughout life the seductions of sex drugs and rock and roll or these days sex drugs and hip-hop okay so the sex the drugs and the hip-hop with the invent and the widespread uh accessibility of the internet and of all these images all these uh, of this genre of music and of the culture behind it it's more difficult to pass these things off as what the bad kids do right because the bad kids back in the day the misfits the outcasts they weren't trying to get an education uh they was you know smoking pot skipping school whatever but now you know now if you're not popping pills if you're not drinking lean if you're not doing these things you're the outcast are the kids your kids are hanging with are they into the drug culture and 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 i ask this because you know it's a serious thing are the kids that your kids hanging with into the drug culture if you tell your kids i don't like that kid you're hanging with your kids gonna be they're gonna go wrong they're gonna hey my mom don't like you but look let's meet it back to school you know what i'm saying you can't approach it like that anymore because the cool kids are the ones popping pills drinking lean and you know turning up then was the outcast back in my day. If you if you wasn't into sports or academics or you really was trying to get on some, if you was hanging out, drugging out and, and drinking that news, whatever, you was a loser back then. To, uh, back now, those are the people that are the coolest. They know what's happening. They're the ones that's getting the most attention. You see what I'm saying, parents? This, this episode, when I saw, I mean, I have a nice corporate position now. I earned that. Those of you that know me, know me intimately. I worked hard, crazy factory jobs. Now I got me a cool corporate position job. And so I go to work where I can sit and watch the news for a minute. And the news flash came across that it was teens, young teens, 13, 14, dying off fentanyl lace pills. Fentanyl lace pills. I didn't even know it fed all this, but I've heard the word in the hip hop rap song. So there's an underculture that I don't even know about that makes it sound cool to do deadly stuff. Now, back when I was young, smoking weed or smoking cigarettes, you know, that was considered cool, but it couldn't kill you till 40 years down the line. <laughs> okay? If you kept doing it, you was going to get lung cancer or something. You take a couple puffs when you cut when you're young and all you're going to do is get you a little high or something like that. Get you a little buzz. But these young people these days can fall out dead off of popping one pill. And you mean to tell me that you parents 
are going to lay back and just buy your kids Christmas presents and buy them stuff and buy them stuff and buy them stuff and buy their love when there's people that they hang with and all they want to do is roll. I had a lady come on my show. I'm not saying no names. Come on my show and say she was rolling with her kids in the background. I can't make this up. Y'all go back on my YouTube channel. Y'all go back on my Instagram channel, my Facebook channel. Go back to my early episodes if you're a mess. This is real. And so the parents are rolling in front of their kids. Parents, if you... Now, I knew some people that I grew up with that as soon as they became parents, I'm going to smoke high with my kids. I tell them as long as they do it at home where I can see them. Ah! Smack yourself. And one more time. Somebody reach out and smack them. I wish it, I wish it was not against the law to smack a parent that was doing bad parenting. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm saying? Imagine if it was a law that you couldn't go to jail for slapping somebody when you observed or heard them uh, saying bad parenting. Man, do you know how the internet would be full of images of folks getting slapped across their face? Psh, you did what? Man, I got to sip to this one. I'm going to go to the screen share in a minute. But live your truth is for y'all to come on to this platform. You can come on for 30, 40 seconds. You ain't got to stay the whole time with me. You can ask for, you can get in the comment section and ask for the link. I'll send it to you. Jump on here and make sure that these young people, I, when, I, when I was still doing You're a Mess, I would tell folks, I don't want Cardi B and Kodak Black. Teaching my young people, my young people, I have four children, how to have relationships. And everybody was like, ah, 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 ah. Do Cardi B and Kodak Black talk about rolling off pills and drank and, and lean? Self-love, right? Self-worth, self-confidence, believing in oneself. Self-discipline. I got a good, my oldest boy is a good dude. And I don't deserve a, a, a young person like that. Now, I was hanging out with a family member, you know, extended family. And the young man eased up on me and he was like, Taibu. Your son, your son, man, he's a good dude. Like, what you talking about? Y'all always hang on the time. Of course, y'all friends. He was like, nah, nah. We tried our best to get him to smoke weed. And he said no. So what I'm saying to you, you people are, if you say do as I say and not as I do, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Someone is going to pass your child something that might take their life and you won't be able to forgive yourself because you know they saw you do it first. And then you'll slap yourself. To the screen share. Now I ran a couple y'all off. We're going to screen share this thing. Let's go to the effects of drug abuse. I want y'all to know right here, as it says, teens who abuse drugs have a greater risk of developing an addiction when they're adult. Now, it's important to know the difference between drug abuse and addiction, right? Teen drug abuse can have long-term cognitive and behavioral effects since the teenage brain is still developing. Y'all might have heard, thought about this, but you didn't know if it was true or not. Half of all new drug users are under the age 18. Half of all new drug users 
are under the age. Them is y'all kids, people. Yearn. Them is your kids. Half was going on, Brother Basim. Half of all of y'all children. Don't think that your don't think that your children's not one of them new drug users. But I showed y'all last night that four or five new drug users lost their life the first time they popped the pill, went to bed, and didn't wake up. And this is going to happen to you if you're not watching this show and you're not getting what I have to teach you. Let's go. <laughs> let's go back over here. Now, it says the, the common reasons that teens abuse drugs include curiosity, peer pressure, stress, a desire to escape. Now, I'm tough on young people. It's supposed to be right not only am i am i the man but you know what i'm saying so I'm, I'm supposed to have that hard line on discipline on structure that's for me to do the moms y'all you know when you have the man at home or a man at home you know what i'm saying willing to play that role you can do more nurturing and that's cool you know you can ooh, you know pat them on the back when they mad and upset because they have to you know conform but here's the deal fathers Man, you can't be so hard on them that they don't know it comes with love, right? Because when it comes with love, they won't have this desire to escape what's going on at home and they'll turn to drug addiction. They'll turn to trying drugs. Stress. Young people, that one is solely on you. Y'all got some nerve. In a day and age when more people have than more than ever before, right? There are millions of new millionaires every year since 2019. Millions of new millions. When more people these days are having more than ever before in human history, thanks to the internet, y'all got some nerve being so stressed out that you would try a drug that can take your life. All right. And let me be clear. I'm not saying that changing a new school isn't stressful. Going to next grade isn't stressful. I'm not saying these things aren't stressful. But if you have a home life that's difficult, they have resources at school, trust a person, not that drug that promises to take you away or somebody tells you it'll take away that pain, it'll help you to deal with it. Don't, don't do that. Don't fall for that. That's not for you. Um, What I do want to ask everybody out there is, you know, how am I doing? Am I giving you guys the facts that matter? Now that I'm doing live your truth, and trust me, you know, I'm doing matchmaking and counseling too. Y'all yeah, saw me go through a thing for a couple days. I had to put my girlfriend out there and her side dudes. But that was just, that's just me. I'm like, put it out there, live your truth. Right? Lots of things had to happen, had to be some restructuring going on. But hey, live your truth. This is my platform. Don't be afraid to let out your emotions, young people. Just don't don't repress it because that's when it becomes the stress that makes you abuse drugs. Peer pressure. I asked when the show first started. Who is your teenager hanging with? Do you know? Do you know? If you don't know who your kids is hanging with, you don't know what kind of pressure their peer is putting on them. Pressure to have sex? Eh, that's dicey. That's a big deal. Pressure to just pop a pill? Not that difficult of a stretch for your team to make. And this curiosity one, that's what I have against hip hop. It's making everybody's kids curious about stuff that can kill them. Now, what are the signs of teen drug abuse? Right? It says there are many signs that a teen is using drugs. It can be difficult to tell the difference between the pangs of adolescence and actual drug use, but parents can be what? Proactive in talking to their teen to find out what's going on.
I'm going to save some lives tonight by talking to you parents. Learn how to talk to your kids. Right. When I came home from doing time for a crime I didn't commit. I'm still writing books about it because I still want the people that uh, illegally locked me up and incarcerated me <clears throat> to go to jail. But when I got out from that, one of my children was in an unhealthy state. And when I tried to get them back healthy, like right away, like I was like, let's go take care of this. I pushed them away. They wouldn't even talk to me. So how you respond to something that they're going to, they might put, it might push them away and they might not talk to you. And then now that you're not there, what do they replace that with? What do they replace it with? Exactly. Some common signs of teen drug abuse include bad grades, bloodshot eyes, laughing for no reason, loss of interest in activities, poor hygiene. Your kids, if your kid's room is dirty, they know they're living in filth. If their room is dirty, but if they're not taking showers, you know, not brushing their teeth or combing their hair, diminished personal appearance, they avoid eye contact, frequent hunger or munchies. <laughs> That's always, always a dead giveaway. The smell of smoke on breath or clothes. Secretive behavior. So for you parents that throw a phone in your kids' hands and say, just call me if you need me and play it like that's just a device for them to communicate with you. It's not anymore. The phone has porn on it. The phone, the phone has porn on it. The phone has uh it has perverts on trying to get at your kids the phone has drug dealers trying to sell your kids stuff um all the corporate marketers are trying to get them to download things uh bottom line is what it is so you know what i'm saying the phone can do a, the phone can do a lot of stuff so secretive behavior you're supposed to have parental controls on your kids phone until they can pay their own phone bill <laughs> What's going on, Brother Basim? I want you to know I pulled you in because you are on Instagram. You know that if you click the bold letters in that link I just sent you, it'll bring you right in and everybody on Facebook and YouTube will see you and I can do the, the, the picture in picture with you. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's how that's how I've been doing it. You, 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 you can you can stay on too. It's just they, they can hear you because of my big mic. But I'm saying if you want to come on the live screen, that yeah, you can get in the virtual studio just by doing that. So that's how I've been doing it lately. But how you doing, though, good brother? All right, all right. Brother Basim, everybody. So uh you saying go to you saying go to YouTube, correct? No, 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 no. I use I stream on StreamYard. So you can you you can you can like and, and, and subscribe to my page. I'd appreciate that support. But what I'm saying is is when I the link I sent you, uh all you do is you just click the, the bold part of the lettering. That's what I heard. You click, you click the bold letters, it'll bring you right into the studio. I'll see you and I'll click enter. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, it, it, it should be pretty, pretty effortless. Um, but, I'm, but but if you have more than one device like I do, then you can go ahead and you know stay live with Instagram so your folks on Instagram can see you and just use a different device to, to join up the live. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's kind of up to you. But man, I ain't seen the minutes. Good to see you, man. Shoot, you know Super Bowl coming up. I'm gonna get your prediction in a minute. So quick, try that, try that, try that, try that link real quick. If it doesn't work, we'll we'll, we'll do it right here. But just give it a try real quick and see what happens. All right, let me. I'll switch to I'll be back. All right, appreciate you, brother Basim. Everybody, good brother Father in New York, man, making it happen, doing the right thing. We're talking about the best ways to get due to our children, right, when it comes to drug abuse and addiction. Um, antisocial behavior, right? These things, antisocial behavior, all that stuff. We want you to know this is a very big deal. Very big deal. Parents going into their kid's bedroom. Okay, it's time for bed. You know, clean this place up, you know. 
Davion, Davion, you know, Manuel, Manuel, you know, just just shaking their kid, running the call 911. You don't know CPR. You don't know what to do. You just freaking out. By the time the paramedics get there, your child is gone. All right. Now I can I can because I'm a little bit crazy. I can role play this by myself for a second. Just so you know what's going on. Siblings, past siblings, dangerous drugs, acid, crystal meth, fentanyl lace pills. They arrested two people that live next to a middle school. A middle school, people. People that live next to a middle school selling fentanyl lace pills. Here's the sad truth. The sad truth is they have to buy them. No one, people, is sitting your child down and forcing them. No one's sitting them down and forcing the pills into their mouth. These kids are happily going around the corner off school grounds and pss, pss, pss. or the people selling these pills are giving them to kids who are meeting them in bathrooms and gymnasiums and going crazy with them. Brother Basim, everybody. Basim Abdulaziz. All right. Welcome to the show, Brother Aziz. How you doing? Appreciate you. Just checking you out, you know. I've been out the net for a minute, you know. Okay, okay. You know, I took some time out for myself, so, you know. Okay. I'm okay. ready to, like, you know, get back in. Yeah, a little that's bit. real. Just a little bit. I'm walking slow, though, you know. Yeah, that's 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 real. So. Uh, I hear your topic tonight. You you know, that's a very important topic. You know, um, I tell people trends and fad has become the new religion. You know, and unfortunately, you have a lot of parents that are friends with their children. Now, so now more, hold on, hold on, Brother Basim, hold on, hold on, hold on. Say that again a little bit louder. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run this again tomorrow for sure. That part for sure. Definitely, you have a lot of parents that have become friends with their children. They're more or less like. <laughs> father brothers and mother sisters opposed to being parents. So therefore there's a lack of respect because you have taken them on as like one of your peers and they're definitely not your peer. Now, now what's now, okay. I know that in my opinion, what the danger of doing that is, right? You tell me first, I'm gonna let you go first. What's the danger? I heard you use the word respect, but, but what's the real danger in being your child's friend and not the parent. Well, the biggest thing is, is, is a lack of respect. Uh, and, you know, your children grow up to think you equal. So therefore, when you become the parent trying to be a disciplinary, you can't discipline your child because you, you're a friend. How could you act like that when you're friends? You, you know, you create a, a barrier where your child doesn't know the difference so therefore, you created a whole drama problem in your house. How could I respect you as a friend when it's cool for us to do certain things and then later on it's not cool? You know, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and lock that in. We're gonna we're gonna pin that up there so everybody can see it. Brother Basim says a lack of respect leads to issues with discipline. Brother Basim. Mm -hmm. What was the parent-child relationship when you grew up? Well, I grew up in a single-parent house. My mother was my mother. She was the disciplinary, you know. Uh, she demanded respect. For all single mothers out there doing it, doing it real. You know, and uh, like I said, you know, there was rules and regulations in the house. You know, can I come and drink in her house? Absolutely not. We not, we not there. Can I smoke in her house? Absolutely not. We're not there, you know. 
am I going to sneak and do what I do when she's not home? Absolutely. That's just being a child. But the the repercussions if I get caught was going to be like uh, tremendous. Welcome to the show, everybody. This is our good friend, Christy. Christy, Brother Basim Abdulaziz, Brother Basim Christy out in Madison, Wisconsin. Brother Bas Basim is out there representing the NY. No, I'm in Jersey. I'm in Jersey. Okay. Representing no, Brick City. Absolutely. So, Christy, um, what do you think about what Brother Basim's comments are saying as far as a parent forgetting to be the parent and, and has become these uh, young people's friend? I agree with that a hundred percent. If they're being a parent at all, yeah. <laughs> say that. Okay, we're listening to you. Live your truth. So nowadays, there's a lot of you know, the kids that are acting out and doing things are watching their parents do it. Um, and the parents don't seem to care they do it right with them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so down here in texas two uh 20 late 20s early 30s somethings were living next to a middle school a middle school and kids at this school were overdosing four of them passed away i'm talking about just the unimaginable. We're not talking about a school shooting or nothing. Like we're talking about young kids caught up in what I call the hip hop culture of, you know, uh, you know, popping pills and I'm and rolling and all this other stuff, right? And you hear the words fentanyl in, you know, Rick Ross's music. You know what I'm saying? I know Kodak Black talks about doing a lot of drugs and you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying like. Is just the end thing now. And I, was, I started to show Christy and Brother Basim by saying, when I was young, if you were doing stuff like that, it was already a loser. What am I messing with you? You know what I'm saying? Real rap. These days, the people that's doing the most drugs and getting the most, you know, lit, <laughs> whatever, them's the cool ones. So Christy... You have kids, but the I don't know. I've never really asked you that, but if you have kids, I'm saying, how is this affecting your young people, Christy? How are you keeping tabs on them and, 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 and getting them to open up to you about the drug culture, the hip hop culture, the usage in their schools? Well, I actually just went through something with my 15 year old um, here in my little hometown. Um, I'm from Belleville, which is like 30 minutes from Madison. I know where Belleville is. Um, I've been there. Vaping, THC is the thing. Okay. Um, my son was honest about it. He tried it. I asked him, you know, how it made him feel and how other people reacted to it. Um, and this is not excusing it. He has ADHD, and he yeah. said it actually calmed him down where other people were going crazy, like they just couldn't control themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and he ended up with a $680 ticket where the Caucasians ended up with an $80 ticket for the same exact thing. Same exact thing. Um, but he learned a lesson with that. You know, because he could not do sports for a whole year. He's he'll be able to start baseball this year, but wow. for a whole year he was out of sports. Wow. So Brother Basin, you have a program. Would you like to introduce Christy and everybody else who doesn't know about your online platform? Uh men dealing with hidden streak of traumas, where so, uh there are a lot of men including myself, you know, well, uh, we tend to suppress our feelings and emotions opposed to actually embracing them. And in the process of suppressing our feelings and emotions, we tend to lash out at the people that 
we care about the most a lot of times. But society has taken us into that dark sp spot due to the fact that society told us as men, you know, we're supposed to be strong, bold, and you don't want to hear a man whining because if he's whining, he appears to be a weak man. Okay. So, therefore, opposed to looking weak and in inferior, opposed to not being inferior, we rather suppress them feelings and put on a mask every day like we're good and we're really broken on the inside. So okay. basically the program is geared where though men can open up and start dealing with some of them in the feelings so we can start getting back to who we supposed to be, not who we think we have to be. Okay. Okay. So with that being said, I'm trying to figure out who is going to be the champion for the young people because they're definitely losing this battle with peer pressure, with stress. They're definitely losing this battle. I mean, if they're getting themselves in trouble and missing football and baseball and stuff that they want to do, and then at the same time putting their, their lives at risk, how do we overcome, you know, that stuff and, and build a bond with them to where that's not the case? Like, Christy, to your point, I just visited my daughter in Wisconsin. Shout out to my daughter. She's a, a freshman at the University of Wisconsin at Milwaukee, right? She's a Panther. And so when I visited her, I was talking to her. We, it was Thanksgiving. Family was there. And we were talking. It was just like, you know, well, Dad, I've done that already. I've done speaking about drugs, speaking about alcohol, right? Drinking and using the fake ID to get into, into clubs and stuff like that. And, you know, she's grown now. So... I had to switch switch tactics, you know what I'm saying? And so I just take it like, man, you know, that's, that's pretty wild, you know. But I had a fake ID when I was young, right? So, you know what I'm saying? This is my only daughter, so how do I bridge that gap? You know what I'm saying, Chrissy? I mean, help me out there, you know what I'm saying? She's 18, and, you know, she's at college. She's a freshman. You know, we know what happens on these university campuses, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, shoot me some love. How, what, how do I go about dealing with that? It's a lot of it has to do with confidence in the individual themselves. Okay. Um, I was one of those that never really got into drugs. I drank, but I didn't drink until I was old enough. Um, but even my son right now, helps mentor other kids his age, older and younger. Wow. Because of what he went through. Like he's being a voice where there's so many people that are scared to have that voice. Okay. As you were saying about men not being able to show their feelings. They need to hold that all in. I've taught him and we've done different, this is going to sound funny, but we did different activities so he can show and be able to let out his emotions and his feelings. And it's very hard for a non-Caucasian, especially in Belleville, to do that because he's a minority, but he is being that voice for the kids that will not come out and are too scared to come out. Um, and as far as your daughter goes, I've already explained the situations that I've had, um, which I've talked to my daughter about, not all in detail, but it scares her to be around things. You know, the boy thing right now, yeah, she's nine. The boy thing and all that disgusts her, um, alcohol, all that stuff. Like, I'm trying to instill it into them at a young age. I don't know how young is too young, but you have to start somewhere. And with that said, Brother Basim, it, it seems that 
even though parents know better, they're not doing better. What's up with that phenomenon? Because I mean, the youth are getting a lot more wild and like you said, less respectful. So how's that happen? You you have to understand it's a lot of peer pressure out here. And you know, you absolutely. You you have a lot of grown people to still fall victim to peer pressure. Wow. You know, let, let, let's let, yeah. let's let's be honest. Let's sit down and take a look at how many parents or or, or, or or grown men running around with their pants hanging off their behinds, emulating what they seen because they want to fit into the equation. You know, they don't want to feel left out. Some people have no identity, so therefore. Once again, they're looking out the outer lens at life, so they're trying to blend in in whatever's popular or whatever trend is trending right now. What's the cutoff age, Brother Basim, in, in your opinion, for men to sag their pants, if any? I, I, I think, you know, uh, that's for children, and I don't think it's for children. I think, you know, I don't think none of us should be running around with our pants sagging, honestly, you know. That's not a lot of the time. But like I said, it's a it's a learned behavior, you know. It's going from generation to generation. And everybody's embracing it. So if you see your big homie with his pants sagging now, of course you're emulating him. So therefore, your pants gonna be sagging. All right, all right. Respect, respect. I just had to throw that out there for all y'all that don't know. Brother Basim says, "Pull your pants up. Your your, your draw shouldn't be shown." Absolutely right. not. So. Mm-hmm. You know, what all this boils down to is parents showing their children love. That is not happening. And even the trends that are going on, if parents showed their kids more love and spent time with them instead of giving, 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 I think a lot of this stuff would change. Well, I I, 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 I agree with you. Uh, definitely. Uh, I see a lot of parents, they show love, but they show love in the wrong form. You have to understand who the parents are sometimes. Sometimes the parents, you know, they caught between being a parent and still being in the hood, you know, being on a block. And when they interacting with their children because they love their children, but they're talking to their children like they on a block. Mm. Like the children is one of the homies. Mm. No, that's your child. That's not one of the homies. Right. You sitting there talking to your daughter, talking about, come on, bro. Come on, bro. No, that's your daughter. You know, and we have to figure out, like, and draw that line in the sand. Like, look, if you want to be cool, it's cool for you to be cool. But when you're spending time with your children... You need to be a father. You need to be a mother. Mm-hmm. You know, that's real. That's you know, real. You got to have that cutoff switch. <laughs> you know, it says here the common drugs that teens abuse are alcohol. It says approximately twenty percent of twelfth graders reported binge drinking in twenty fourteen. Nearly forty percent had used alcohol in the last month. So. You know, if you understand what the word binge means, binge means like drink a whole bunch at one time. Yeah. All right. So that should be real about that. Marijuana, the gateway drug, THC. Why is in the marijuana, as far as it being the gateway drug, I think people real don't realize what that means, gateway drug. What it means is that marijuana is a high the first time you smoke it it's a high so blissful but when the, but your tolerance raises real quick so when you want to when you want to feel that fresh blissful high again you go to something stronger you 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 leave marijuana alone and go to something Did everybody get it Does that make sense y'all but you yes. have you 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 have to understand some when, when you got a government that's actually promoting marijuana for monetary uh, growth, you have a problem. You know, marijuana is, is, is the new alcohol. You know, prohibition was over. Alcohol is a liquor store in all the corners now. 
Mm-hmm. Now they're setting up marijuana shops. And once the feds get a green light, it's really going to become ridiculous. You know? Well, I mean, it says right here, the next thing, which is what we're covering today, fentanyl lace pills. So <laughs> something that something that can kill you to make the high stronger. I was leading into that, Brother Basine. You hear me, you hear me Christy? I was leading yeah, into that. I, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was, I'm sorry, but sorry to hear that. I was leading into that for you parents that don't know that they add fentanyl to the pills to make them more potent because they know that these young kids are chasing these highs, chasing these feelings. But the fentanyl is a lethal dose. To make it make you high enough to really feel it, it has to be a lethal dose. Especially for these young kids, these fresh bodies, these tiny people. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Let's just be honest. So the curiosity can can really these days kill the cat. I'm tired of more with these, man. I'm breaking it down for y'all. Uh, it just make it just makes sense. I'm gonna stop the share so we can really get into the, the, the comments of the people. Here's the, here's the thing: the show is supposed to be about teaching folks stuff. Christy, you were the last person to pop in. You're the first person. I'm gonna give you the first crack at talking about a solution. We have a bunch of kids out there listening to all this hip hop culture that talks about the pills and the alcohol. I, I gotta go, bro. Oh, you gotta go. Yeah, yeah, I got, I gotta go. But uh, always a pleasure, and, and I definitely be popping back in soon. You know, uh, keep doing what you're doing, save some lives. You know, hope somebody get this. Like, like I said, you know, that drug scene is is dangerous. You know, and we got to do better. You know, we got to stop running around here in a stupor, because as long as we stay high drunk. We can't pay attention to what's really going on. And there's some things going on that we need to be paying attention to. Amen. Name is Basim Abdul Aziz. Peace. Thank you again. Brick City in the house, everybody. So all over the country, people are having things to say about child addicts part two. Christy, I mean, you know, you have teens at home. And they're they're susceptible to peer pressures in the, out there in the community. Uh, they want to be they want to be accepted, right? And so, what do you have to say now that you've gone through it personally? What do you have to say, man? As far as like the solution, you know what I'm saying? Like it could be in the homes, it could be community outreach. What is your what do you what do you think the solution is? Well. I know it wouldn't change things immediately, but I think schools and communities need to do more assemblies with it. Um, Have individuals that have actually had bad outcomes. I know that's bad to say, but you know, I've lost two people to it that had done different things for years and thought they were doing the same thing. And there they were dead at, you know, it, it needs to be talked about more. You know, it, it, you show your age and you talk about a school assembly. I do. I don't even know if they're still doing that the way we used to do it. You know what I'm saying? But I feel, you though know, the school assembly thing, like catch them right where they're at, right where they can actually talk about it with their peers as soon as the assembly's over with, yeah, some of that sensationalism, some of that shock treatment. That's why I'm doing motivational speaking. Um, I, you know, it's so crazy. A guy came to the gym, you know what I'm saying? I'm the GM, uh, I'm the general manager uh, of, a, of a major corporate chain gym up here in Texas um, now. And, you know, a guy came in there and he, when he saw that I had other things going on outside the gym that were positive, motivational speaking, the book writing, stuff like that, like he wanted to bring me in. And I was telling him, like, you know, it, there's there's just such a huge need for a positive word. That's my solution, y'all. Please give a positive word whenever you can. You know, the teens who are in trouble, they do reach out before they reach back or reach down for them drugs. 
Christy, man, it got real late so fast. I'm, I'm glad you jumped in here and had your piece. Uh, I'm still waiting for you to reach out to me so we can do a show about, you know, what, what you want to talk about. I still am looking for funding for the Guardian Gear Tech Wearable um, to stop rapes, abductions, and domestic violence. Um, I still have my man setting a focus group up there in Madison, Wisconsin. And um, after we do your show or doing your show, we'll promote um, the Guardian Gear. And I, I'll link you two up, up, up there together. Ibrahim's a great dude. He has long graphic design business. He's been in business for 15 years. Um, we really want this to come out and help free, you know, women of all ages and all uh, cultural ethnic backgrounds from uh, that oppressive uh, sense of never, of being alone when you they need to have, you know, some backup. You know what I mean? And so uh, that being said, man, make sure you reach out to me, um, you know, the inbox me. Let's let's get a time to do your show. Um, I'll, I'll run the commercial for the Guardian gear. We'll talk about the, you know, uh, getting um, getting things together as far as like, you know, the GoFundMe page and stuff, how people can donate. But I'm telling you right now, moving forward, that definitely in and of itself is a huge issue to deal with. 48 women per hour above 18 at that. It's, it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. You can get a lot of support from here in this little town. Huh? I said, and you'd get a lot of support here in this little town. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you right now. I mean, the bottom, the bottom line is, I just still that number is too high for a sane person to even t to 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 rest at night. Well, I you know. know what I'm saying. I mean, that's just. I mean, that's just. I mean, one is too many, but 48 an hour. Yeah. It's just, and that's, and that's the statistic for. Women, women above eighteen. That does, that's not even counting all the juvenile statistics for it. It's ridiculous. Uh, yeah. So let's make sure we get your show out here, man, so we can get it out there. Because you see, it's the content. People have access to my shows. If they're on YouTube. They're streamed on YouTube. So you know, you can you can share it out for for days. Help some young ladies. Help some grown women. You know, see the Guardian Gear device isn't really just for to to prevent that from happening is to open the world back up for people, women that it have happened to when i did my research women who's you know whether it was a home invasion or got pulled into an alleyway these things do happen people they the world is now closed to them they're not as free to go out and, and do things as, hey we we go into the so-and-so bar meet us women who've been through this do are they're shooting that down they're not with that women who've been through this put on a whole bunch of weight because they think it makes them unattractive to, to would be assailants. Um, it's, it messes up people's whole existence. The guardian gear tech device is, both, is, is was meant to open the world back up to them because now they know they don't have to fear being alone when they need somebody there to be advocate the most. All right. So I'm telling you, Chris, it's, it's so genius, man. I'm, I'm doing this for the people. Taibu Muadi, thank you for living your truth this night. And, he left in a rush, but since you're still here, I gotta give you a shout out. Let's go. Shout some folks out now. It's your, it's your, it's your shout out. Let's go. Um, what? <laughs> come on, you got, you got. You, come on, you on, you on. You, you, it's, 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 that's what we do. So you gotta shout out your kids, Beville. You know, you gotta shout something. You gotta shout something out, Jesus. I don't just shout something out. Just shout out to them. Let's go. You have a shout out to my kiddos that are still awake in the house being nosy at the door. And I give a shout out to you for all you do and the amazing things that you're doing and will continue to be doing. And God put you on this earth for doing that. There's a purpose and a reason you go through your, you know, your trials and the errors and everything else. But at the end of the day, He's yeah. going to let you know what you're here for, and this is what you're here for. Yeah, we appreciate you, Christy, man. You're welcome anytime. Later on in the – oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. You watch football, too. Who's going to win, Eagles or Chiefs? I don't watch football. You So you're not going to watch Super Bowl? No. Well, there it is. Out there in Beeville, she'd rather be skeet shooting. She'd rather, she, she'd rather be a uh, uh, – uh, 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 what they call it? tossing? Um, what do they call it? Uh, the the tossing the bags, the bean bags, bean bag toss, be real. No, be I'll probably be working or at the gym. 
or doing oh, something yeah. with the kids. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I, I got the online coaching program, man. Go to K- uh, patreon.com uh, backslash coach Taibu. It's the first step program. It's effort, focus, and commitment. We can strategize your weight loss journey or your fitness journey. We just be more strategic about it. We can get it done. Also, we also want to uplift you mentally and emotionally and develop some new positive habits. All right. So check that out, man. Uh, Patreon.com backslash Coach Taibu. Shout out to you, man. Shout out to the whole Mass Wisconsin area. I miss y'all. I love y'all. We out. See you tomorrow. All right, man. Look, here's the deal. If you have young people in your life, if you do, make sure that they know that you care about their now and you care about their future. Because what they're doing now will greatly affect their future. All right. All guests of the show are welcome to stay after. I click off. She left. My bad. I meant to tell her she can stay in the studio. We can chop it up afterwards. But I'm telling you right now, it's Titan Muadib. I really appreciate y'all, man, for jumping in here, getting it done. Uh, I will continue to bring out the, the things that matter. There will be new developments happening with the Memphis uh, killer cops. There's new develops happening every day with the investigation into how many more people were selling these kids, these fentanyl lace pills. I'm telling you right now, um, we're going to get to the bottom of it. I won't stand for it. We're doing relationship counseling and advice. We're doing matchmaking. Um, we had a young lady on here that wants to link up. So she's going to come in here and do a full show so we can get her out there, man. She's out in Kuwait right now, but she will be back stateside looking for that God-fearing man that she can call her own. Tyler Wood D right here. You know what it is. That's the show. See y'all tomorrow night. Ding.